Are we rolling? Because I got a, I got something to say. Hey, let's go. <laughs> you already know. You already know. And this is you already know. What up? What up? What up? What up? Oh snap! What's really good, dogs? What you know, good there, gay. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 I, I'm not an entertainment folk like you. They got me recording early on the early side. Usually, I'm answering emails, not recording. Well, what's crazy is that we are like backwards matching right now. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, green and black. It's that kind of day. You, you, you know what? Get the you, money and be real. It's get money and be real. Huh? You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you know what, saying? what I'm saying? Cash and, and reparations go hand in hand. Blackness. You know what I'm saying? A thousand percent. You, One thousand percent. We, we, you know what, Keenan? It's like when, when, when you have a lot in common, eventually you just evolve into telepathy. I'm telling you, man. Y'all witnessing it right now. That's all I'm saying. He, he, you know is, what I'm saying? Mad random. It's I'm about random. to change clothes to go do Charlemagne show. <laughs> I'm going to change clothes to go do that. Like, you know, I ain't yeah. just going to go up there in a t-shirt, I guess. I mean, but you never man, know. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be a different t-shirt, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> in a Miri t-shirt. But that was my plan. I was going to change clothes or whatever. But the fact that I haven't changed yet is crazy. And I have just put on this because... It's and early. I almost didn't put my hat on. You know what I'm saying? I almost, Me neither. You know, I just like, let me toss this hat on real quick. I got to get a haircut later today. That's so like, crazy. Toss this hat on. My there hair brushes upstairs. It's like, nah, I ain't going to do all that. Well, <laughs> if you're listening, he's wearing a black hat and a green green shirt. I'm wearing a green hat and a black shirt. Welcome to You Already Know. He's Keenan Thompson. I'm Tony Maroli. We are back. Episode like 119, something like that. We are far yeah. gone. We are far gone. That's yes. what's up. How's it been? So What's going down with you? Everything's been well. Everything's going on been great. in the streets, man. Oh man, the streets are the streets are cold. We have a lot to go over in such little time. How are <laughs> you doing, my friend? I'm good, man. You know, pushing through the summer. Little baby's little baby's birthday this weekend. <gasps> really? Four. Oh my! Four. Shout out to Gianna. Oh, what's the plans? What's the plans? Big plans? You know, you know birthday party in it. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, like. Uh, we always do a, um, what's this shit called? <laughs> the shit that you beat with the stick and the candy powder. Oh, pinata. Pinata, yeah. We always do a pinata. Oh, with all the favorite treats and, and, and yeah. toys and up in there. Just so she's a big LOL Dolls fan. So shout out to all y'all LOL Doll fans out there. So we got a LOL Doll pinata. I can't wait to watch them bust it. It's funny. Every yep. Time. <laughs> Luckily, she doesn't watch the show because otherwise, if she heard it on, on Friday, she'd be like, they got the LOL pinata. Damn, they blew up the spot. No, she brought it out already. She knows. Oh, okay, you know, say no more. So she, she grown she grown. It to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she so, grown grown. She's like, this yeah. is what we're doing. This is the color yeah. swath. We're you know blocking saying? colors according this is to what I want to have happen. So, vision. Vision. You know, Ke- Keenan. I respect she, it. She, she's speaking to you like, Keenan. Keenan. Yeah. You're yeah. like, what? I'm that Keenan. Man, I think, you know, one of those crazy moments in parenting is when your kids ask you what your name is. You know what I'm saying? There's a there's a day where they're like, what's your name? No. <laughs> and I'm like, it's Keenan. And she's like, Keenan, that's your name? I was like, yeah, that's my name. And she's like, oh, I'm going to call you dad. It's like, yes, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, call me dad. But, you know. That's fun. And just watching her process you as a person kind of for the first time instead of just like their parent, it's it's pretty crazy. You are an entity, now you're a human. Yes. Yes. Now I'm just <laughs> that guy. Hey, that guy. I need this and that and the other. <laughs> it sounded like a sentient robot talking to its maker, like, what is your name? Because they're basically similar to it you know what i mean they're getting programmed you know what i'm saying as they learn you know that's how they start you know responding to their thought processes about things you know what i mean and then when that question strikes their mind they're like oh yeah i've met a lot of people with names and this that and the other but we haven't had this conversation particularly yet you know what i mean because i never introduced myself to her i've just always been there it's crazy that's, that's i never thought about that I never thought there was a point where you they'll ask like, "Who are you?" You know yeah. what I mean? I was like, yeah. "Wow, deep thoughts, yeah. Keenan, off the fucking yeah. rip." It was a good one. 
Oh, geez. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to move fast. So let's let's keep this moving. Uh, shout outs to Gianna. Happy birthday to her. Oh, she's a great one. Um, she will. All right. Um, well, you know, this is from my New Yorkers and non-native New Yorkers alike, <laughs> Keenan. Uh-huh. Some of your out of towners might come to New York and not know how to identify discrepancy. So let me give you a heads up. When we go, what happened? That's us giving you a grace period to change what you just said or to stand on it. Now, the next step is we'll lean forward and hike up our pants. That is a sign that it's been escalated. So once the hike up the pants commence, you're about to get punched in your face shortly after. I guarantee. Now, guarantee. there's only one borough of people that will let you know where they're from before they hook off on you. Yeah, you guessed it. A Brooklyn nigga. You know, oh, oh, nigga, I'm from Brooklyn. Slap the chest, lean forward, hike up the pants, hook off. You feel me? That's how it works with them. Now, you'll know you're beefing with a Harlem cat because what he's wearing is going to be immaculate. His tins are going to be custom made. His icy white tee will somehow have cufflinks. So when you're going down with the beat down, take notes of what he's wearing because you might want to hit Macy's before you go back to JFK. You heard? Now, if you're fighting a Puerto Rican, you Spanish heard? dude, there's a chance he's from the Bronx. Once you say, yo, F that, I don't care, ah, 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 you're going to see a silhouette of a bunch of Puerto Ricans. So you're going to see Papito <laughs> and Maria and everybody come out and, and you're going to be like honey to bees. They're going to be all on. Silhouette. Everybody gets it popping, even the baby. If you think you're going to get a even fair one baby. in the Bronx with a Puerto Rican, that's a wrap. It's quiet for that. Now, if you fight a Jamaican, he might be from White Plains Road in the Bronx, or he could be from Church Avenue in Brooklyn. You may not know. <laughs> However, if you do this, you sadly mistaken. You're going to get the Charlie Murphy, Rick James kicking your chest. They give you that footwork early. You feel me? Or when he argue, he doing this. He arguing, he's doing this because he's searching for the next piece of item that's going to go to the side of your head to put you on a concrete <laughs> calmly. You understand what I'm talking about? That's just a little piece of information I can give you offhand about what to expect and think about when you come to New York. Hold that down with you. Yeah, I mean, did he tell any lies? Did he tell any lies? Zero lies. Zero lies told. Zero lies told? He broke it down by area. That was fantastic. He said, you might want to check out what he's wearing, you know what I'm saying? So you can stop by Macy's on your way back, <laughs> on your way back to JFK. Like, get the fuck out of here. He is hilarious. If he picks his pants up and goes yeah. like this, oh you're my about God. to fight. <laughs> what happened is hilarious. I'm sorry, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, real. That's, your, that's your chance to switch up what you just said or stand on it. You know what I mean? It's your choice. But, but then but, it's going to escalate from that point. Like it's, it's a fork in the road, my friend. It's a clear oh fork God. in the it's road. A clear fork. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> what happened? That's what hilarious. Happened? <laughs> <laughs> he said the Jamaican gonna give you feet. <laughs> right. Start activating feet on you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Activated dude, seat. listen, my boy does t- kickboxing. I was mm-hmm. like, listen, bro, I'm not even I'm not afraid of you whatsoever, but I know if I have to fight you, I'm coming in close because I cannot let you activate your feet. I, and there's nothing I cannot let you activate your feet. You have to knock me out with your hands or choke me because I know you're too dangerous with your feet. Because most people don't really be expecting them feet to come all the way up to the eyeball. To the cheek. <sighs> Even to the chest, half. even to the chest is like what? I mean, there's certain people that really know how to fight groups. You know what I'm saying? Or just like slippery, just you know, outside in the street, slip and slide kind of fighting, where you know, motherfuckers is you know, everybody keeps like you know, oh, 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 type shit when they're mm-hmm. coming up to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's my, he's running in and out. He's mad, unpredictable. And he just so lets he just all that shit come without losing balance. And lets you kind of swing, and then he swings over top of you and connects yep. his shit. Yep. And then you go like, "Oh, I wasn't expecting to get hit. I was expecting to hit something." Yep. And then the motherfuckers go flying backwards, and then another motherfucker gets kicked in his fucking face and goes flying backwards because he wasn't expecting motherfucker to really get his leg up like that. <laughs> <laughs> can't be. You can't just be out here fighting people you don't know, bro. Because motherfuckers be knowing some shit out here. <laughs> you know, I swear to God, I'm I'm working on a project. I'm going to write. A man kicks the dude in the face, and the dude goes, "Did he just kick me?" Yeah, you know he just kicked me. He just kicked me in the face. Kick me. Yeah, yeah like it's that more was of a funny shock. As shit in Rush Hour too. Chris Tucker. Was, <laughs> oh yeah. He just kicked me. He just gave me a fucking <laughs> reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit.
Yeah, no, you're right on that one. Um, speaking of New York, um, I made an observation. Mm. You know, you're you're basically a native New Yorker at this point. You've been there for 20 years. Um, there's only three type of people on Staten Island: cops, mobsters, mm. and the Wu Tang Clan. Right. I was about to say firefighters. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Me too. But it ruined yeah. the punchline because all three are not yeah. to be fucked with. Firefighters are for the people. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were in my honorable yeah. mention. Firefighters and, and whoever Colin Joseph Peoples are. Those so are three, honorable mention. There's three groups of people not to be fucked with. Yes, yeah. not to be fucked with. With another yeah. two subsect of groups on the yeah. island. Everybody knows not to fuck with the Wu Tang Clan. Donald yeah. Rollins. That yeah, was hilarious. A hundred percent. You don't want to mess with mobsters and you don't want to mess yeah. with copsters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Be wary of all of them. Shout out to our firemen and shout out to Colin Joseph's people. All right. All Let's right. keep it moving. <laughs> um, Keenan, you have children. I don't know if you're aware of this, but this is probably to your benefit as a father. Chuck E. Cheese has a one child or more pol- policy, apparently. Apparently, you need to have a kid in order to enter. You cannot just go there for pizza and the view. Yeah, as you shouldn't, because the pizza is kitty pizza. It's not good pizza. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's There's no reason. Though. The toys is, you know, the games are, you know, very, very child, you know, 12 and under at the max type stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you ain't got no business in the Chuck E. Cheese. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no kids. You know what I'm saying? Like parents, we don't play that. Like, what you, what you, uh, hey, can I help you? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what are you doing here? You know, like. It's bad enough, like, you got to keep your eye on your kids at all times, but then you got to keep your eyes on your kids in a setting where they're supposed to be safe. It's like, yo, my man, what are you doing? What are you, what, what are you doing here? You know what I'm saying? Are you floating the ball pit? And we got every right to ask that question. All this, like, racial asking a black man what he's doing standing outside of his house is some bullshit. But a parent asking somebody who don't got kids what they're doing in the Chuck E. Cheese, that's, that's valid all day, all day, but- all day. What if he's how there can, for the How pizza? can we help you, sir? What if he's like, yo, they, they have the pizza's good and they have a, and their cherry Coke is sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I get it from the 7-Eleven, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, we, we ain't really got nothing to, to, to talk about. the the inverse of this is someone out there is really fucked up about this rule change so like the pace of the crib like Chuck E. Cheese I can't it's it's my happy place I mean but I mean I I, you know I understand there's certain people that are still like maybe seven years old in their mind and stuff like that and it might be a happy place for them you know what I'm saying but you know, there's got to be parameters for safety's sake. You know what I mean? This is a society. This is not just an establishment. So you can't just give, you know, room for, you know, the, the wolf to come through, even though it might be mostly sheep around. You know, you can't just leave the gate open because, you know, you never know. No, you're 100 percent right. Trust me. If you're a man going to Chuck E. Cheese with no children, you fuck out of here. Yeah, hey, hey, fuck <laughs> out of here, bro. <laughs> fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Some Brooklyn yeah. dude's gonna roll up on you, pull his pants up, and start and start squaring up, and you gonna Word. know what it is. What yeah, you, you What you doing saying? here, my man? Yeah. Like, like fuck out of here. I'm sorry. Fuck what out happened? here. What, what happened? What happened? That's <laughs> your chance to either leave Chuck E. Cheese right. or stand on your mids. <laughs> That's your chance. Either way. <laughs> it's going to be something that's going to happen in the next five seconds. <laughs> Either you're moving or the furniture's moving. Oh. One or the other or both. <laughs> Tussling. 100%. I don't know if you're caught up. I don't know if you're watching the show. Do you watch Westworld right now? No. I mean, I was watching season one and fell off in season two, which I think I have a habit of doing with a lot of shows. Like <laughs> certain shows, like I'll just start, you know, just stay with it but others i'm like i don't know something will be weird and i you know i won't let them just waste my time laying out some shit for season three you know what i'm saying they gotta like tighten it up always it's just supposed to be tight <laughs> this is the same man who's rewatched sons of anarchy at least four to five times sopranos maybe to like eight. season five this it's a solid show sopranos forget about it All right. Well, I'm here to report. I hear that Westworld is dope. I'm just, I fell off. That's all. I'm with you on that. I'm here to report. I was, I was kind of with you last season. I was like the whole last season, but it was, it's, they spend like $200 million on it. So it's like, it's just beautiful to watch and the money's mm-hmm. all on the screen. So it's like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm gonna watch this. Mm-hmm. This season, 
Jonathan Nolan, shout out to him and Lisa Joy, the creators, whose brothers are Christopher Nolan and wrote Batman Begins, Dark Knight, all that shit with him. Mm -hmm. They pulled a magic trick off, Mm -hmm. which movies and and TV have done before. Mm -hmm. But the way they pulled it off, Could chef kiss to them. Chef Word. kiss to them. They, they they made me believe and understand. I got lost in it. Then they brought me out of it and was like, and I was like, okay. Because it's it, so many people try to or have, and they haven't done it so gracefully. So yeah. shout out to them. I implore you, know it all. Get into Westworld. It is probably one of the w- best well-produced shows. It's up there at Foundation in terms of like epic scale of money and just like, mm-hmm. whoa, look at the detail on this. Like, yeah. What season is it in? It's in season four now, middle of season four now. But there's only okay, eight so episodes a season. Only you, wait a, you can binge that in two days, bro. Just chilling yeah. on a, on a, on a low key weekend. You know what I mean? When do I have two whole days to just sit and watch television? Never. Well, ain't no sports on though. Ain't no sports on That's right now. That's true. I mean, sports, baseball is crazy. That, but no, I have not. Yeah. I have not watched Sports Center in weeks. Thank you, because baseball terrible. season's on. I would almost be willing to wager that if ESPN could look at their graph of like engagement, it definitely they goes know. down in baseball season. And they then know. as soon as football training camp comes back, we back, baby. Because football comes back with several sports too. It comes back with all. It comes back with school. It comes back with everything. So it just comes back with, you know, the mentality of. Yeah, like getting out there in the world and what 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 that means. Like if you go to school, there's a lot of sports there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like everybody, you know, gets back, you know, ready for if you run track or if you're, you know, into the Olympic shit or if you play tennis. It's like when you go back to school, that's when you get back around those uh, facilities and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like just a sports dump in the fall. It feels like and football kicks it off. You know what I'm saying? And then into you know, basketball preseasons and whatnot, and then it's just cracking. Well, let's just be honest. No one fucks with baseball. Shout out to baseball. I know MLB is going to call you to do some shit one day. Listen, I said no, 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 no one no. I mean, a lot of people fuck with it. It's just hard in the summer because it's hot, number one, and they play a lot of games. Like, they, you know, that's, it's a long-ass season, so it's hard to, like, watch that shit nightly or whatever, but real fans, like, they know. They, them motherfuckers be smacking homers, man, like, Often, there are certain motherfuckers that are just like beasts, and then they try to predict October or whatever based on how the summer goes. But it's a it's a very patient kind of experience. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to have a whole lot of patience to fuck with the baseball season for real. Like I couldn't do no fantasy baseball. It's just too much. It's too much. It's too long. 80, 160 games or something, something like crazy. that. No, it's, no, it's no, crazy. no, no. Fantasy baseball is insanity. Double headers. Watching baseball on television twice, I'd kill me. No, listen, and if I showed you the top five baseball players, you'd be like, who that? Who, who's these people? Right so, now, yeah, because, like, they be, it'd be randoms. Like, this dude's been in the league for a while, and he just all of a sudden is just a monster and is smacking them. Man, there are so many, like, Diesel ass white dudes I've never seen that or heard of that are just smacking homers left and right on, on like the the Cardinals or the fucking you know the Rockies you know just like a whole lot of just you know auxiliary not even auxiliary players but just players I don't really know their names you know what yep. I'm saying and I guess that's the excitement of sports because there's always a new emerging athlete and stuff like that but yeah it's hard to keep up with it's a it's a lot of teams it's a lot of games. A lot of players here. Yeah, I don't know. It's, Some dude I never heard of turned down four hundred million. Team. Some dude I never heard of turned, turned down, down a four hundred million dollar contract. That's because he wants more. Because it's like yeah, it looks like it's like 12, 15 years or thirteen yeah. years. It's like that's just like thirty million a year. Dudes out here getting forty million. Fuck, I'm a, I look like a fool because I'm gonna take the guaranteed four hundred million. Fools. I'm like, you know what? You're right. God bless you, King. But God damn, like. Speaking of, the lottery is up to a billion. Next topic. Yo, see, you psychic today. We psychic. Literally the next topic right under big money this Friday. Next topic. Keenan, let's go into it. So when is the drawing? CNN has reported all jurisdictions have reported in and no one has hit the mega millions jackpot. So the jackpot will roll to one billion point five million dollars cash money after taxes. 
cash money after taxes. That is leapfrogging ability. What would you do if you had an instant $600 million liquid after taxes? Like instant. I'm out. I'm out. I'm gone. Y'all not going to hear from me. I mean, <laughs> fuck this famous shit. I don't give a fuck about being famous. Like, I'm out. I will be famous for being rich only. <laughs> so it'll be moving around like that. But past that, talk shows and shit, and never. <laughs> <laughs> Never. It's like, man, 600. Nah, I'm just playing. I don't I really couldn't tell you, man. Like, I'll probably just continue what I'm doing just at, you know, the highest level. You know what I'm saying? The whole, it, then now you're talking like moving globally type shit. So it'll be a whole lot of time spent probably overseas because I've seen America. So I would come here for only certain things or some shit like that. But, you know, Monaco is such a mystery and fucking... You know, all these other kind of, you know what I mean? All those, that kind of shit, you know, like it takes a while to establish like a relationship with, you know, a town or a group of people or whatever. Like, then you don't want to like leave them type shit. You just want to keep that shit going, new friendships, whatever type shit. It can fucking like get really confusing. You don't know what to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, am I starting a lineage here, lineage over there? Like, you know what I mean? Or am I just going to constantly bop around, you know what I mean, for forever type shit. Like, we got enough money to do that, so what do we do? Just chase the summer? I'd wager, before I say what I would probably do, I knowing you, you'd probably be on the Eddie Murphy program, where it's like you buy an amazing compound, you know, where you can, like, like your dream place, where you don't have to ever leave if when you're there type shit. You get, like, maybe a pier to tear here or there, then you'll do your traveling. And then after a year or two of traveling, you don't hit everybody place. You don't hit every you know, boat. You know, you're going to go back to the compound, and you're going to hold court. And then, you know, they're going to bring you projects, and you're like, nah, 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 nah. And you'll be like, you know, 2052 Oscars? Yeah, I'll host that. You know, fuck it, I'll come out of retirement. You know what I mean? Right. You know, right. fuck it. Why not? Yeah, it's like right. I haven't seen you guys in a while. That's like the opening yeah. joke. Everyone's like, oh. spin the bow tie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're, you're 70 years old spinning a bow tie. So you know what's up with that? They're like, oh, he still got it. <laughs> still got it. Still got it. That's showbiz, baby. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I really couldn't tell you. Like, you know, yeah. when 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 you take the have to out of things, it really changes a lot. Changes everything. As I said, I need money like oxygen. So I have so much. I don't have to think about well, that part. Now it's like, what am I doing? That's the goal. Yeah, 600 million doing? liquid after taxes. That'll help you out there, guys. Um, on a side note, the, have, the owner of Raising Canes, which is actually a franchise I fuck with, believe it or not, um, on the last drawing, which was 810 million that no one won, he spent $50,000 on tickets for all for one ticket for all of his 50,000 employees. So we basically spent 50 G's to each, give each employee across the whole the whole Raising Kings franchise a ticket to the lottery, basically, when it was at 800 million. Pretty insane. So shout outs to you, Todd Graves. Shout outs to Raising Motherfucking Kings. Say that one more time. All right. So basically, uh, Todd Craves from Raising Canes gave each one of his employees, his 50,000 employees, a ticket to the the lock the lottery when it was at 800 million. Uh -huh. So he spent 50 G's just to right. give everyone a chance to win 800 million. You know what I that's mean? Dope. That's dope. Cool. Hell yeah, that's dope as fuck. You know what I mean? They didn't Even win, though. No one won. I'm, so you got to spend another 50 G. Did they come back and be like, hey, can we get one more ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's do it again. One more time. One more time. Double or nothing. Double or nothing. One more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to drop 100. I'm, I'm just what is raising? What is raising canes? It's a chicken finger uh, fast food franchise that's growing very fast. They opened one in Burbank. Um, oh. Fries are cool. Garlic uh, bread is I. Chicken fingers are very good. Overall, good experience. So it's like, and it's like a novelty because it's rare. So it's How like the lines are long. Fries, fries are like supposedly like the easiest shit to do. They're not fucked up. They're just like they're not. I like they're crinkle cut, so they're not crispy crinkle cut. They're like kind of like soft crinkle cut. Like you know, I'm a, I'm a snob about shit. That's so. frozen. 
That's, yeah, that's yeah, super food. mega frozen, mega yeah. frozen, nah, nah, nah. like like the Disney pick. You know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, nah, yeah, yeah, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, that definitely. If you're I don't gonna know. go frozen cream cookie, you might as well import them Nathan's, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we do it like them. <laughs> they got that shit for you if it's gonna go frozen. So like go on to the store. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So speaking of money, I don't know if you know you heard or saw, but the Fed raised interest rates a record second quarter in a row. So is that good or no? That's bad? bad that's bad that's bad it's good and bad paroli will be able to correct me but according to cnn what seemed unfathomable just six months ago a 75 point a 75 basis point rate hike by the federal reserve has now happened twice in a row so um i'll save you the long short tld tldr too long don't read um this is unprecedented uh with we're we're at a, we're at an inflation point that we haven't seen since theoretically 2018 and, and and the rate hike is the highest since like the 80s um they're trying to get people that they're, they're trying to get people to stop swapping money and borrowing money so they can mm-hmm. stop spending money so the prices go down because if you give out unlimited money right if there's mm-hmm. if i give out if there's five people and each one and there's you know, if there's 50 people, if there's five people and there's one of these and I can I sell it for a dollar, then one of them gets it for a buck. But if there's 10 people and there's one of these and each one of them has a hundred dollars, I can charge twenty dollars for this one thing. You know what I mean? It's only limited. I, I There's more people. There's more money out here. Therefore, all prices go up. You know, then the, 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 the tax rate hasn't even priced in gas and how futures and gas has hit the supply chain so that your food and everything else goes up. So we're, we're going into like some severe economic restrictions. Like they did, they did the unfathomable. They gave out free money on the, on a tr- multi-trillion dollar level. And now you're seeing the repercussions of giving out free money on a multi-trillion dollar level, which is we need to bring this shit down and temper it down and get people to stop spending, stop spending. Like, even though people are spending more than they did, they're spending more than they did. I believe last quarter, but that's because it's probably correlated because they have to call, they have to spend more, you know, shit call Cost more like gas, goods and services, all that kind of shit. So it's it's an interesting time. And, and what's inverse, which is the weird part is I don't know anyone who predicted this part. But, you know, right now, obviously, as, as the big story is that the, the dollar has parity with the euro and, you know, the sterling, the great, the great Britain currency is almost at parity, too. And it's like we thought America, the dollar would be weakened severely by these actions that we've taken. But because of the Russian sanctions have hit the energy sector of the EU and Great Britain because they depended on Russia so heavy for oil it's like brought the dollar up inversely so it's like it's like your dollar's not worth less than it's ever been but it's worth more than it's ever been globally so that's good it's good if you're rich and you can travel it's bad if you live in america and gotta buy doritos and gas right because that shit's overpriced bingo but if you're rich and you're greece my man greece never been cheaper word Dollars parity of the euro. Euro at one point was like twenty five percent more. You're getting you're, that same yacht that's priced in euros dollar for dollar. Yeah. So they, if, if that yacht was priced at five hundred G's or uh, yeah four hundred G's a week uh, uh, euro, you you have to pay. You had to no. Let's say three hundred G's a week euro. You had to pay four hundred or three seventy five American to get that yacht. So now, now three for three. Maybe that's why everybody is gone. Basically, I mean, they're already going to go anyway. But yeah, you already know what, what time it is. Wow, good for. Well, is it is there any good? It's not good for who you know. Like, what it's are you not good for. for it's situation? not good for normal for normal it's people who don't normal have people who have yeah, a lot of dry powder. People like stories on John Oliver about this lady who like really pulled a calculator out of the grocery store. You know, her kids were like looking at her like, "You really got a calculator?" She's like, "Yeah, I'm really like." doing my, you know, calculations, you know, to make sure I can afford shit and not, have to, you know, put shit back or put shit back or whatever. <coughs> and she said she wasn't even getting that much. She was getting like $90 or something of groceries or whatever. Mm-hmm. But she had to make sure it didn't go above that. I'm like, you know, you think you're getting a lot, 
depending on where you're shopping, but you know, that under a hundred dollar cap at the grocery store, you're not getting much, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you shopping for like you and kids and shit like that, bro. That shit is stressful. So yeah, hearts, hearts is going out. We, we are thinking about y'all and thinking about other ways for y'all to figure out ways to subsidize. You know what I'm saying? Keeping a good eye on this crypto, keeping a good eye on a lot of shit. So keep listening, I guess. This was going to be my last topic, but fuck it. We're just going to jump into it now. What you're witnessing before you, and this is going to disturb you, Keenan, because you'll understand the implications of this, but it's damn near, it's not irreversible, but it, it is what it is. We're moving into a new era where ownership is no longer a thing. Owner Ownership is a class. For the last 50 to, you know, you know, let, let's call it, let's give America some props. 80 years. Ownership has been a thing, meaning you owned your car, you owned your home, you know, you own the appliances in there. You, you, you own something, you know, you could sell it if shit went bad. Excuse me. Fuck cash. Um, now we're entering an era where ownership is being phased out. So it starts with apartments, which started years ago, years and years and so decades ago. You know what I mean? Instead of owning this place, you can rent this box here and you can be freed of the upfront economic burden and you can live according to how you make your money on a month to month and year to year basis. Really smart idea. Great. Then let's go into... Ubers, fast forward. We're going to go to the future. Uber. Hey, guys, you don't need a car. You can press a button and do it with a car. We'll come and pick you up and drive you. And if it's a Honda, it'll be like $7. You know what I mean? And if it's a Tesla, it'll be like $14. And if it's a nice SUV, it'll be $20. Doesn't that sound better than paying a monthly nut and gas and parking, especially in urban areas? Makes sense. Your next iteration is streaming. When I downloaded Apple Music with when it first launched, I'm a music collector. You know, I was a music purchaser and all that good stuff. What I realized is when I signed the agreement, you know, most people don't even think the implications exist. Yeah, I agree. The terms agree. Yeah. I realized that I was in a deal with the devil in the sense that the devil's going to give me access to any music that will ever exist and that did ever exist in history. It's all my thumb. I can get it. It'll be on my phone. I can listen to it. Damn near instant fucking tamiously. That was power. That was never there before unless you were just surfing the internet to download and then you had to find the link, download it, move it to the music, create a playlist, or sync that to your phone. Whole nightmare. They streamlined all that shit. But what they also did is said, you will never own anything for the rest of your life. The moment you stop paying me, it's the moment your library goes, your playlists go, everything's gone. You all, you're in my pocket for life. Same thing with Netflix, movie channels. I used to be a big proponent of like buying movies. Now it's like, bro, everything's on a streaming service. Just go to Apple Music, go rent it or whatever. So now you don't own movies. So extrapolate to the future. Why own anything if everything's just for rent for cheap? I can just rent it as I need it. So now you've turned into a whole class of people who used to own things like 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 housing ownership is like 90 percent of Americans main wealth. You know what I mean? Like most Americans, all their net worth is tied into their home. They're now building housing developments, not apartment complexes. Housing developments with like houses on large properties like cul-de-sacs, suburban sprawl, except these houses aren't for sale. They're all for rent. So independent developers in the past would build a building, sell all the apartments, pay off the mortgage and the and the taxes and keep the profit. Let's do this all over again. The building runs itself on the maintenance fees. The new companies are like, fuck that. We're going to build this building and we're going to lease this shit and take all the lease money, pay the mortgage. We're going to own this forever asset because the land's going up. We can incrementally raise rates up for our, our rent and it's an asset class. So in the future, not only are you going to have haves and have nots, you're going to have owners 
and renters. Small little percentage of people that own a bunch of shit. And they're like, yeah, rent that shit. Use that shit. Airbnb. Airbnb, baby. You know what Airbnb, I mean? Airbnb, baby. Yeah. Toro. Come, go ahead, Toro. You're in the car. Turo, Just turo. drive my 10 Lexuses that I own. Enjoy that. And I think it's scary. It's convenient, but it's super scary, man. It's like fast food. Damn, that's convenient. You just go to the drive through tell what you want, and then they give you a burger, but it's very scary. Yeah, man, because once people wake up from that, it's far too late. Like, if you're used to not owning things, who's going to help you get into ownership of anything and help you to understand what that means? You're first starting to own things that I mean, there's only certain things that appreciate, you know what I'm saying? So what you're going to get into watches first, like what are you going to get into that is going to increase your financial abilities? You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 that's tough. It won't be a thought. Because your necessities is what your car, your mattress, things, you know what I'm saying? Blah, blah, blah. Like a house is like, you know, one of the ultimates. So you put that off for now, but something that you could actually own is mostly depreciative. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Fuck, that's a fucking rat race, man. And that's a spiral, bro. And they're going to keep it like that. They're going to keep most of the things that you get are going to be depreciative. You get what I mean? And the things that are appreciate, certain people are going to buy and they're going to let you touch it for a fee. So Metropolis is not just one little like city. That that movie that's about that, basically, like the worker level and then like the upper level, basically. That's... I guess the metaphor for how whole society is becoming basically. Yep. Right. It's, it's not just in, you know, you know, combustible cities or whatever, you know what I mean? The big yep. cities type shit. It's like, no, this is how society is about to be. Like that's how they're making it financially, basically. Yep. That's crazy. It's have it's haves and have nots. It's my only one main argument when I speak with like really militant black people, and they're like, you know, white people, you know, and I always have to go like I'm always like agree, 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 agree. Correction now here. Right. I've been around wealthy white people my whole fucking life. Fortunately, unfortunately, whatever, however you want to look at it. They'd much rather hang with a rich black person than a poor white person. The trick that 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 divisive, I guess, wealthy people and establishment set up regarding the Caucasian race is basically in order to keep these poor white dudes off my heels. I got to convince them they're superior to these black and dudes over here. So they keep bickering while I keep making the money because they're all beneath me. That's the part no one's woken up to. It's not right. really about race. It's about it's about con- 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 uh, conforming. Yeah, it's about semi fact because they do own. Like, I mean, you part of the people that own the world banks <coughs> and all that shit. Like, that ain't a whole lot of black people there. You know what I'm saying? I don't think any black people are in the thirteen bloodlines. You know what I'm saying? And all that shit. So I don't know if we're supposed to be talking about that without getting in trouble or whatever. My but boys into Habsburg. I knew yeah, a dude who was the Habsburg knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So bloodline of Jesus. There's there's not a lot of n- not fact to those facts. You know what I'm saying? Just as a human being, you're not supposed to think you're above anybody. You know what I'm saying? But as far as like wealth and power is concerned, that is a real daily thing that motherfuckers is like established over hundreds of years. So. What are you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you? What are you really gonna do? You might as well move to fucking the Later. jungle or some shit. I don't know. Good luck. Go to New Zealand. Yeah. Good. Um, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Um, I saw this um the other day on the Pivot Podcast, and I and I thought it was interesting, so I want to discuss it with you. Shout out to Pivot Podcast. Shout out to Kevin Hart. Uh, it's not about getting to the top. It's about staying there. How the fuck do you stay there? That's what people don't think about. Like, how do you stay there? That's the, the, the real struggle, staying there. It's not getting there. Mm-hmm. It's the fucking perception from the outside mm-hmm. of what now? Yeah, you okay. got the model. Yeah. Shit, yeah. let yeah. us know. Yeah. Yeah. 20 yeah. years. But you gotta get the next step, though. That's <laughs> yes. the next step. I'm saying like, that's the, that's the real work. Yeah. So at this point in my career, I look back and I go, well, I've been up here for I've been up here for a minute. I got I got I need other branches. Mm-hmm. So my my branches became the business. 
the business became my, because if I build that, well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to own everything I do. Right. Right. I'm going to own the, the space. So if this ever does peak down, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm in a, my hobby is ownership now. Mm. My, my hobby is realizing the rooms that I've been able to get into, the hands that I shake and the personnel that I'm around. I don't take that for granted. Are you just supposed to shake their hands? Or are you supposed to make more of those moments? That's what we don't do enough of. That was interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, people's perspectives is, is amazing. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Kevin for always speaking his mind. You know, it's like we're, we're lucky to, to have comics. You know what I'm saying? Like actors, when you see them on, you know, podcasts, sometimes might be guarded or whatever, but standups are usually pretty open. You know what I'm saying? So they speak what's on their mind. And it's it's very interesting to listen to, especially a, a young, successful black comedian. You know what I mean? Like they're having an they're having an interesting experience. And also, I mean, I thought maybe you could touch on this, but like what was interesting is like he was he he acknowledged something that we've talked about, like like many people get to the top, like the top's vacillating at all times. You know what I mean? It's like a pop chart damn near, but at like a longer latency, meaning people have it for longer periods, but it's always shifting. The, the hard act is staying at the top for a prolonged period of the time. Like that's the hard part. And I found that interesting where he was just like, yeah, like, you know, that's the part that like, that's what he was saying. He's like, that's the part I got to like, I'm trying to figure out like, how the fuck do I stay here? like how do i continue this shit i think people should just remove the top out of the whole situation you know what i mean like you're having a career so you want to always try to do your best do things at the highest level make the biggest deal possible come up with the best idea like do some shit that's going to explode you know what i'm saying just constantly you know what i'm saying but also take care of if it's wearing you down you know what i'm saying like just hustle 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 you know what i mean then you need to pump brakes, you know, for your health sake, for your mental health sake. You know what I mean? Because what you should be chasing is pleasing, you know what I mean, with your art as opposed to trying to do it for the numbers. You know what I'm saying? And when you're at the so-called top, it's mostly about the numbers. You're getting paid high numbers because people come out and see you in high numbers. And, you know, they'll pay high numbers to come see you type shit or whatever, see what you do. And it turns into this cyclone of how do you top that, top that, top that, top that, top that. If you just remove the word top out of things, I think you can just, you know, continue to pursue to do awesome shit whenever it's time for you to grab the mic. Like, that's an awesome interview he just did. So he's obviously always in the mindset of being dope, being sharp, being whatever, witty, creative, helpful you know, and, and, you know, insightful, whatever type shit. Like you can see that that's always kind of on his mind. So he, he shouldn't really just be like thinking that there is a top, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like it, what is, what is that? You always are just wherever you are in your career. You know what I mean? It's peaks and valleys and shit like that, but you never want to be like, this is the very, very top. And if I don't stay there, I'm going to fall down and never get back to, you know, that certain level or whatever. Like, I think that's looking at it at, you know, kind of the wrong way. You know, it's always a, there's always a, you know, a fall to that. You know what I'm saying? There's always an other side to that coin in the, in thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? When you remove all of that and just go with the shit, yeah, it's going to be hot and cold, hot and cold or whatever, but your mentality and your pursuit of it all, you know what I mean? will stay solid. You know what I'm saying? Because you're always thinking of doing your best type shit. You know what I'm saying? And like putting so much pressure on, exactly where you are on the graph like that shit doesn't matter you can feel it you know what i'm saying like if your movie tanks and you go outside and people pat you on your back that's love regardless of whatever that particular movie just did you know what i'm saying now if you're doing a whole bunch of shit movies and you're kind of a shit person you'll eventually start to feel it you know what i mean based on like when people see you in public and how they react to your presence you know what i'm saying it's just like yo like they'll tell you the world will tell you and I think it's more so about your presence on this planet than it is your status on a graph. So, I mean, that's only, the only way you can maintain peace and sanity. You know what I mean? Is not put everything in your whole existence into 
a persona or a, a, a career persona or anything like that. Like at the end of the day, you're still a human being and you still have these like relationships that love you regardless of who you are, what you do and this, that and the other. And you can't take that shit for granted. But you also can't take for granted the suffering of the world that has nothing to do with your career and shit like that. You can't be like so focused on, you know, what you're doing and how to stay on top that you leave, you know, the little people behind or the people that are struggling because they're not necessarily in your mind, you know, to to think about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't necessarily overly aware of like the child hunger issue until like a few years ago. You know what I'm saying? And it's been a serious problem for like 10 you know what i'm saying and Stanley like, strollers was doing commercials in the 90s dogs no no i'm talking about in america as far as like kids oh, yeah, and yeah, lunches yeah, yeah, and yeah, shit yeah, like yeah. that and breakfast food, food like, insecurity as they call it yeah like after school like there's nothing type thing you know what i'm saying so like a lot of kids like depend yep, on yep. schools to feed them at least yep. breakfast and lunch a hundred percent hundred percent i was like i you know I, would, I was like i knew about the breakfast program and like everything you know what i mean was hopefully trying to get subsidized, but I wasn't aware of the real issue until I got involved with like certain groups, like no kid hungry and blah, blah, blah. And I, I was really starting to hear the statistics of kids that are starving for real, for real in America. And I was like, how do we have such obesity? And then we have children starving. Like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? So that was a wake up call to be like, you know, it's hard to celebrate you know, your wins when people are losing so hard, you know what I'm saying? So I, I try not to focus on that. What I focus on is doing my job as best as I can. And then always like keeping my eyes and ears kind of open to any kind of situation where I can be of use. And I see a lot of that in Kevin, you know what I'm saying? But I also know that that drive to try to stay the man or try to stay on top, if you will, it's impossible. You know what I mean? Nobody stays on top forever. You know what I'm saying? People age, people block, you know what I mean? Even athletes, like it's, it's anybody, you know what I mean? It's human nature. People tire of you or whatever, or, you know, you tire of it yourself or whatever type shit. But that doesn't necessarily mean your status is any less because you take a break or some shit. Like we don't see Eddie Murphy much, but when you do see him, you see him as Eddie Murphy. You don't see him as, oh, he was dope 40 years ago, Eddie Murphy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't necessarily lose anything by just maintaining your sanity and, like, not necessarily chasing the flame like that. What I, Your points actually are very, 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 very good points. Um, I think also what I got, what I derived from what Kevin said is – Staying at the top isn't necessarily about staying at the top. It's about transcendence to another plateau. In the well, that's what the of, other dude was trying to say. He's like, you got to find the next step. You got to find the next milestone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but the next going, milestone like, is the business. Like, that's right. what you're going through, right? Like, everyone's like, Keenan, you're SNL and TV shows. You're, I mean, where do you go from here? And you're like, I want to own businesses. I want to produce mm -hmm. shit. I want to have my name on shit that I didn't have to wake up and dance and talk to and sing none of that like i want to own shit you know what i yeah. mean that's it's me topping myself you know what i mean yeah but like it's it's almost like an oxymoron when you use top and then you go past it and then you there's another top and then you go past it. it's like just get rid of the tops just keep oh going. got you, you, know got what you. What I'm just keep going pivot it's another phase else. another Yo, phase when i looked at bill cosby's website for the first time he had like eight categories of William Cosby and who this man is. Bill Cosby, the acting career, the comedian that we know was one section. There were seven other sections that have nothing to do with entertainment on this man's website. Like he ain't Bill Cosby. You know what I'm saying? That shit yeah. is crazy. It's just like that showed me like this dude is a thinker outside of a lot of norms. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, you know, William H. Cosby Vineyards. You know, William H. Cosby education program, whatever the blah, 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 blah. Right. Don't buy that wine, ladies. Stay away from the wine, folks, and coffee. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, man, like just pivoting and, and keep grinding. You know what I'm saying? Pivot and grind, you know, like because when you when you assume that you've gotten to the top of something, it can it can damper the experience, I think. And that, you know, that shouldn't be great. I just saw Kevin, you know, on stage and, you know, he's great. He's great at it. You know what I mean? So I don't want him to think that 
whenever he does, you know, get up there, it's the end all be all if it's not better than the previous. It's like, just have fun. You know what I'm saying? Just have fun. Figure out a different way to be creative and everything, but don't damper the situation because you feel like you've hit a ceiling. No, you're, you're right. You're right. Ceilings do exist. But if you have the opportunity to not look at it as a ceiling, you should you should do so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, I you're right. Um, I just when you said ceiling, I just started thinking about seal the singer. All right, moving on. Um, yeah, it's like I'm like ceiling. What does that mean? Like when he slaps you, or like he? We like, also got the pep shop boys and seal. <laughs> also got the pep shop boys and seal. Shout out to Talladega Nights, man. Yeah, it's you know. Talladega Nights. Like, one of the most slept solid on movie. of those movies. Of those it's movies, a solid actually. fucking movie. One of the man. most slept on of those of, of that whole series. Jack could not have been funnier in that movie. Oh, he's so good. Yeah, so shout good. out to Jack, man. Big time. Um, so um, Keenan, we finally went viral. Um, courtesy of our brother Mike Tyson and the Hot Boxing Podcast. Oh man, it's, is that what happened? It's is spreading it like wildfire right now, Keenan. I get a lot and of messages. Yeah, it's no, it's it's going on all types of websites, like my <laughs> trainer tells me that some dude sent it to him just talking about yo you seen this clip is crazy not knowing he trains me like mm -hmm. having no idea he just watching some clip you know what i mean yeah. so shout out to tyson and hot boxing i wanted to discuss percent. that's our brother man yep so i want to discuss what happened here our thought process and more particularly <clears throat> your thought process and how you feel about the reception regarding this conversation post since this has been shared with the world now, I use the N-bomb every fucking day, 24-7. So do but I. I'm in that nuanced paradox where I understand exactly what he's saying, mm -hmm. where there should be better, but if... Hey, check this like out, me. Einstein. Me. Right. Mike. Einstein. <laughs> I'm not a nigga, I'm nothing. Not true. No, no, it's true. If I believe it's true. Yeah, but you should no, no, believe no, no, that. No, you can't control the way I fucking think, nigga. I'm not trying to. Then don't talk about it. That's what it is. <laughs> nah, if, I don't, if I'm not a nigga... I'm nothing. So don't tell me I'm not. Why would you Are think you a that? sign? Because it is. It's that way. That's where we agree to disagree. Because I, agree I look at you too. as a king, my brother. You know what I'm saying? I look at you as one of the greatest people that ever walked this planet. The things you have done in your lifetime is so far away from the original connotation of that word. It's crazy. You don't know my shadow. I don't. I know what you've done in my shadow, life. My shadow comes... Um, it, it counterproducts everything you say about me, brother. I mean, I my know what you've what done you in don't the know light, about my brother. Me. You can't oh, okay. have a shadow without the light. Yo, dudes went crazy with that comment. They were like, mm -hmm. what? Keenan dropped the <laughs> dropped a bomb on Mike. Like the comments from TikTok to different people's IGs. I've seen it posted on several accounts. I'm like, whoa, like dudes really didn't know who the fuck you was before this shit almost like damn near. Apparently not. But, you know, they should listen to the pod. Anyway, that wasn't nothing, man. Like that, that was like talking to your older brother and him being like, you know, passionate about something and not really hearing his little brothers. You know what I'm saying? Because that man has experienced some shit that he feels like we, I, you know, don't necessarily he can't see that I can relate to necessarily type shit. But I know where he's coming from. I know his shit has been, you know, traumatic and, you know, life is hard and, you know, he's dealt with very specific extreme varieties of trauma and stuff like that and had to process it and he processed it into becoming a ferocious beast and that's his safe place and you know his defense mechanisms and shit like that but at the end of the day he felt us you know what i'm saying like he felt me when i was saying what i was saying because i wasn't saying it to demean him i was saying it first of all you know to make motherfuckers see that 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 word needs to be laid to rest because it's not doing anybody no favors. Um, but at the same time, I understand the comfort that we have grown to have with the word through hip hop, through not to blame it on hip hop at all, but I know you hear it a lot, mostly on a day to day basis through music. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, through conversations on the trains through certain demographics, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like barbershop. that way, like barbershops and things like it's in the culture. But at the same time, when are we going to attempt to just daily constantly try to make better decisions? It's like when you go make a decision about what you're about to eat, you know what I mean? You go, you know, all right, well, I want to eat something fast. All right. Well, if I'm going to wind up at fast food, can I at least order something healthy from the fast food place? It's all that kind of decision making type shit you know what i'm saying like you have a choice you know so 
am I going to choose to think outside of myself or am I just going to sit in my comfort zone? But at the same time, when I said the original connotation of that word, people are like, well, you know, the word actually comes from Nagus and it comes yeah. from They're like, listen, man, that's not what the fuck we're talking about. Stop <laughs> micro picking <laughs> at situations just to make a point. You know the point I'm trying to make. You know what I'm saying? When that word was derogatorily slapped on the culture like that, that's what I'm talking about, the original connotation of the word. The, the usage of the word that makes everybody go, ooh, and associate it with negativity. Not everybody is like, well, you know, you know, it actually comes from, yeah, like that's a fact that is buried and, you know, only certain people know about it. You know what I'm saying? Because it was buried through the use of the derogatory re reissue of the word. You know what yep. I'm saying? So, yeah, I was just trying to make him see that. Number one, I'm not going to let you just like sit in that. You know what I'm saying? Like you've done way too much. You know what I mean? Like this man is a father of several. You know, he's out there hustling, trying to like make it, trying to do. I see the attempts, the tried to, you know what I'm saying? To live righteous, this, that, and the other. I know he went to jail and read a lot. You know what I mean? Like he's educated himself. So I'm like, nah. But yeah, people do have a dark side. I get it. But at the same time, you can't not have both and you have a choice you know what i'm saying you do have a choice in mostly everything so if you can try to focus on choosing towards positivity that is better don't you think like it was a, it was a simple point i'm trying to make past that the n-word shit i ain't having that shit you know what i'm saying for nobody i'm not i'm not with that shit i'm not just gonna allow you to think that that's where you know your existence on this planet is or has anything to do with, or, you know, anybody telling you what your place is or any of that shit. Like we supposed to be free beings, you know what I'm saying? So I loved it because at the end of it, he felt us. And then we started laughing again, you know what I'm saying? And like fucking just kicking it again, you know, but it was, it was a very serious moment for sure. And yeah, I did not like upsetting him. You know what I'm saying? It was like, <laughs> yo, this is getting tense. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is this getting so tense? You know what I mean? But I think he was thinking that we were coming at him like we smarter than him or something like that. And that was not the case. It was just like, I, I disagree, but I also strongly disagree. You know what I'm saying? And that was that. So, um, people ask, like, uh, will ask me like, yo, so what happened? And I'll be like, all right, first of all, it was tense in that room for that one 90 second period of time. Cause when he shifted in his seat, my mind goes, okay, so if he two pieces my man's, I have to get up and get one piece. The one piece you ain't gonna uh, hit Mike Tyson. I, I, I'm not gonna hit him, gonna but I'm like, gonna get up yo, 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 and get yo, yo, yo. one piece. No, but me just oh, getting take up. One, two? Mid Tiger gets me. Take one, two. Yeah, yeah, so it's a wrap. I already, I've already extrapolated. By the time he hits you but with the whoop whoop, and I'm like, yo, chill. He's that's like, that's another Whoa. thing. He doesn't just sock people. Like I know no, him. I know, you gotta I know. really like pride him. So like I knew we were still having a conversation. Everybody like. Yo, you was shook, man. You was about to get knocked up. I was like, no, I wasn't. Like, <laughs> I know. He was a grown father. Like, he ain't just out here trying to sock people. But you guys are doing business. <laughs> if you <laughs> press his about? buttons enough, then he might just be like frustrated and get up and like just like walk away or whatever because he doesn't want to put his hands on people that he knows that he could just dis destroy. Yeah, like, I ain't trying to stand up to Mike Tyson. I know who he is, but at the same time. I'm a man with an opinion as well. You know what I'm saying? So if we can't discuss this like adults, then what the fuck is we doing out here? You know what I'm saying? And that's all I, I looked at that like that. Just know I had, I was going to take the I one piece. It. I appreciate it. I was, I, I was going to take the one piece just like, no. But if I, was, if I saw that I was super irking him to the point where he was about to get up and shit, I would have I calmed that down myself. You're like, yo, chill, like, big dog. Yo, my man. <laughs> Ain't nothing but love here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not the guy that broke your pigeon's neck when you was nine years old on the rooftop. It's not me. Nope. I'm here out of love. I'm yep. here. I'm not, you know, fucking Don King. I ain't none of these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not Mitch. What's his name? I'm what Mitch Green. Name? Yeah, Mitch Green. You gonna start saying your name over and over so victims humanize themselves. Keenan right. Thompson. I'm Keenan yeah, yeah, Thompson. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm telling I'm you. Keenan Thompson. It's like, relax, oh, Keenan relax. Thompson. But... <laughs> What I am proud of is the fact that, you know, a lot of people are, are hearing that conversation, man. Like, hear that conversation for real. You know what I mean? Like, I think people need to, like, really sit down and talk about this shit. You know what I'm saying? There's no rights or wrongs. I just, I think, you know, we might need to pay attention because a lot of, just a lot of blatant 
hatred going on for people. And if you don't have an obvious self-respect of culture, how are you going to expect other cultures to respect your culture? You know what I'm saying? So, yep. That's where I'm at. Agreed. Fully agreed. Um, moving on. Um, I, I hate to give this game guy shine. We're not, we're making fun of him. Um, <laughs> basically tr- Trump's a fucking moron. I don't know if you've seen this one, but this guy's a real moron. And I'll tell you what, if I were ever, uh, oh my I'd God. be the greatest woman's basketball coach in history. Because I don't like LeBron James. I like Michael Jordan much better. But, but, I'd, but I'd go up to LeBron James. It doesn't matter. I'd say, LeBron, did you ever have any desire to be a woman? <laughs> because what I'd love you to do is star on my team that I'm building up. I will have the greatest team in history. They'll never lose. Nobody will come within 70 points of this team. Man, turn this guy. And we have to change that. And we have to make it okay to... He's so stupid. The crazy <laughs> thing is that people are still showing up and clapping for this guy. Because he's Who entertainment. Are these people? He's entertainment. I'm convinced now. I'm convinced. All right. Now I understand. I will never vote this man as my president. All right. Even though, even though, whatever. I would never vote for him as president. Let's just I get mean, that clear. He's always been that. done. He's always been just the, the clown show. It, that's it. And he's just like has more attention and he knows what works. He's doubling down. Like, dude literally sat there in a rally talking about, I would have the best WNBA team. Live tell LeBron, you ever thought about being a woman? No team would ever come within 70 points. And so white person is like, LeBron, turn woman, yeah. Ah, free Britney Griner, like what? Free Britney Griner, minds, yo. Well, yo, she's coming she, home. They about to trade her. We no, called it. Did they we made call an, it. They made an offer. They gonna Russia trade. didn't accept the trade. Oh, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't accept the trade. They still going to give you Victor Borch. You want Ooh, the, the Borch merchant back? of death? The merchant right. of death. He been in locked up for wild years. You think Putin's like, oh, we really need the merchant of death back home. Uh, if we can't function without him, they're like, man, keep him. He already been down seven. He'd be back in 18. We good. I'd rather have you Americans tortured with your with your with your Britney Griner over here and your news cycles, your endless news cycles. And it makes your government look weak. You have no autonomy. You can't even come here and get her, homeboy. <coughs> All that army shit y'all talking. What? What? That's what he's doing. That's what that's exactly what he's doing. That's crazy. He's showing you like, oh, this is your leader. Mm-hmm. Let me slap him. You know, how like a dude. You know, this is the guy you, you he was look looking up for to? a slap. And this was like, oh, this is my <laughs> slap. How he never thought his slap would come in the form of a six foot nine black female <laughs> basketball player. He was like, I thought the slap was coming from some, some fucking sanction shit. Crazy. Yup. <laughs> he didn't, but you know what? It made a lot of sense. Something that that insignificant would be that so important to America. You know right. what I mean? This We're not talking exactly about my point about the America. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's interesting. All right, um, all right. So Keenan, you know, I have to make a a confession here. All right, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out, pause, and say it. <laughs> all right, Marvel, Marvel Studios, you win. You won. They got you. They got me. I am now obsessed with the coochie flip. You're welcome, Black Widow. I need to discuss this. Okay, so how does this maneuver work, the coochie flip? Black Widow, played by the lovely Scarlett Johansson, Jost, um, runs into your face after fucking you up and then jumps coochie first into your face with her legs wrapped around your neck to the shoulders, then thrusts her hips to get you to flip backwards. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I vehemently detested this move for very long. And then I started thinking about this and I was like, no, it's implausible, but, 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 but I would, I would legitimately love to see this in like the porn version of Avengers, like dirty Avengers, like dirty Avengers. Oh. <laughs> and he's like, oh, <laughs> And when she flips him, it's on a waterbed. Like, right, right. Oh, yeah. It just keeps going. <laughs> he just goes, oh, shit. Ah, just gets the snack in there. 
<laughs> you are stupid as hell. <laughs> Oh my oh. god. <laughs> they in Shield's office. Nick Fury up there watching like a cuck. Like <laughs> Nick Shield. Nick Fury up there. Jacket jacket only. Yeah. Pause <laughs> in the concert, Nick Fury. Standing in the corner. With, like so can steal with an eye patch. Just sitting there. Like, uh, what you looking at, Nick? <laughs> uh, hilarious. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. All right, You're we're about stupid. to go devolve down to Cliff Keenan for the last 15 minutes. So it had to come somewhere. Pause. All right. Um, this is a message to all you single guys. Watch out out there. It's not safe. Strap up, beloveds. Okay, strap up. You hit it from the back, beating my shit in. I asked you why I feel like that. You said feel like what? I tell you, meet the meat. You said you took the rubber off, so I'm <clears throat> throwing it back even harder. You tell me you got the nuts, so I'm. Throwing it back even harder. You got the one hand on the neck, one thumb in ass, hitting my shit, beating it the fuck in. Now you nut. You leave the money on the dresser for it, plan B. Two days later, you calling my phone asking me, did I take it? Take what? I left the money on the dresser for the plan, plan what? 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 Okay. Oh, my, you're not so, taking a plan B, though? What was the thing no, before? She taking plan A. Which is okay. having your baby. <laughs> exactly. So that, 18 so years. She, continue, she, had to, she talking about the thumb and all that. What? She's telling a whole lot of her business. The thumb and the thumb and the butt is a good maneuver, guys. If you never tried that one, it gives you grip. It's the grip. And then you grab the hip. And it's like. Future said it, bro. I'm going to put it. Hey. I'm going to put my thumb in her butt. Future said it, bro. Future said it, it's law. It's law. It's law. Flow. Speaking speaking of people out here wilding, did you hear Elon Musk reportedly had an affair with the wife of Google co-founder and longtime friend Sergey Brin, prompting his divorce earlier this year? Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, so know-it-alls. Apparently, Google co-founder Sergey Brin filed for divorce after learning that his wife cheated on him with Elon Musk, whose electric car company Tesla was propped up by Brin during the 2008 financial crisis, according to a report on Sunday. The two tech titans were longtime friends, with Musk saying that for years he regularly <clears throat> crashed at Brin's Silicon Valley home until the Tesla titans' brief filing fling with Nicole Shanahan last year, the Wall Street Journal said. Brin and Shanahan were separated, but still living together at the time of their affair, of the affair in December, a person close to her told the journal. Bryn, who's worth $95 billion, filed the report divorce in January, citing irreconcilable differences. The move came several weeks after he found out that Musk and Shannon had hooked up. People familiar with the matter told the journal. It's like, damn, dude's worth $95? You had to get with dude worth 200 something Like, really? This is what we do? <laughs> like, would it $95 not be able to get you, ma? His company, I just looked at their earnings. Google words of mother made like, made like 30 billion last quarter the dude last makes 30 quarter. billion a quarter quarter and you went with some dude with 12 babies I'm telling you brother what listen bro you find a real one you better keep it bro you better keep it chris brown told you bro chris brown told you that's all i gotta say man i don't need to repeat the song y'all y'all know what he told y'all yeah you can't really quote chris brown yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's the brother got exonerated. So can he get a second chance? Now, nah, okay, say no more. Yeah, say I don't know. I don't really know. But I he mean, fucks just, with us, so you know what I'm saying. He fucks with you, so shout out to him. You know what I'm saying. But we ain't calling him. I mean, we pray for the brother. You know what I'm saying. But what I really pray for is the people that are around him, watching him. You know, just spiral out of control. I'm like, y'all gonna, you know, pull it. I know he's a grown man, but at the same time, you know his his uh. His health is on display, if you will. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, if you're really around this dude, you should really be trying to help this dude. Because right now, he's his, his slip is showing, if you will, like they said in Ray. You know what I'm saying? Like, we see it. So, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I've ever really met him. Um, I, I don't think I have. I feel like I will remember. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I don't know, man. Thousand of me. I, I hate nasty. watching that. I hate watching people just spiral out of control and then it's too late and everybody's lighting a candle. You know what I'm saying? I think he'll be I think he'll be good. I think he just ebbs and flows. 
you know, this isn't the first time where it's like, what's happening with Chris Brown? And it's like, oh, Chris Brown's back. You know what I mean? I know like, it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot to deal with because his initial trajectory was so, you know, rocket fuel <laughs> and like positive. And then like he ran into a wall of yep. the reality of who he is and the situation. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Of course. And it didn't match with what the, you know, his public persona was, you know what I'm yep. saying? And then all that, you know, was just shattering. So the ups and downs and back and forth of, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm, it, it's taxing. I'm sure it is. It's mentally taxing. He was never expecting to have to deal with that. I'm sure when he was just putting out yo and, you know, the Christmas movie and all, you know what I mean? Like, yep. and just being like, you know, everybody's little brother basically, but then she got all too real. And then, you know, it seems like everybody would abandon or whatever. It's a lot to go through. You know what I mean? A lot. <clears throat> a lot. Uh, moving on. Have you, you're not watching 98 Fiance anymore, are you? I'm not. I haven't watched much television lately. All right. I'm not going to go over every I got couple. sucked into the Formula One. So I watched all four seasons of that. That shit was dope. Say less, pause. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to go over the couples. It's your a. It's your atypical. You know, you know. We already know this. Just terrible, life, terrible life choices is what TLC stands for. Yeah. But what I'm noticing is there's a theme <laughs> regarding the men that get. You just there's a theme regarding all the fucking men on this show, and I think beyond just the terrible life choices, what it comes down to is all right. So this is a guy named Muhammad in this season, right? And he talks like this. And he if you hear him, you think he's slow, but he's actually smart. It's just the way he talks. It's weird. So he talks like Mace. Bingo. Arabic Mace. And he's like 24, 5, and his woman's 49, and she's like an autistic kid that's 14. It's like, it's, it, it's, a, it's a mess, you know. He's in the country, can't work the whole nine, right? He gets an issue where he's like, yo, you can't be wearing revealing clothes. Like, if why are we not? If we're not getting married, why am I even here? You know, he wants her to be his mother. He said this. I want her to be my mother. It's weird. It's weird. Right. And at one point they get in an argument and he's like, and he's like, and she's just like, I mean, well, what do you want to do? He's like, I'm going home. And she's like, well, OK, he's like, fine, buy me tickets. And I was like. It's crystallized. It all it was there already, but I was like, "Thank you, crystallization. You've in you've inked in my thesis." What I see is basically a lack of frame. Mm. None of these dudes have masculine frame. So let's mm. discuss frame for two seconds. No, it all mm -hmm. frame is the way you carry yourself, as women would say, boundaries, the 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 the, the rules and, and and code by which you abide by, and how you carry yourself and allow others to treat you thus and kindly. And when you have frame, people must especially a woman who's going to be in your life, she more than likely will have to acquiesce to that frame while you, you know, work and, and become yeah, and understand her. I'm not saying it's a one way thing, but if you do not have frame, meaning she does not respect you at a core fundamental level, the love is useless, my dude, because love is a feeling. It's I'd rather in, in, in my response, in my limited time on this earth with, dealing with women at this point in my life, I rather have respect over love. Because love can fade or anything can happen. But respect, I got your respect. You're going, you're going, we're, you're going to at least respect me at that very least. Whether you love me or not, we're going to have respect. And what I'm noticing is a lot of dudes in general have no frame. They don't have any boundaries. They don't, they don't, they're not willing to say, you know what, not it's my way or the highway, but you know what, I don't mm. deal with that. And if you like that, you need to just go over there with that. Right. And it's sad. It's sad because it's if you just understood, no, bro, you need to just like establish your frame and then enforce it. People, people would come into their life that respect it and want to be within that system. You know what 100%. I mean? Versus yeah. you trying to fall into some woman strip stream or your opposite or the opposite, uh, uh, whoever you're in love with, whether it's a male, woman, they, their slipstream, and now you're just you're just on their dime. You're just, oh, what's going on? What are we doing? How are we doing? And you have no frame. You have no say so. You have no input. You have no respect. Yeah, you gotta have respect, man. Like people need to respect you in order to receive your respect and have it valued. You know what I mean? Like. 
when you respect someone that they should recognize the value in that you know what i'm saying based on the respect that they have for you and if they don't you know you'll see that right I, you know, there's a lot of people fear the unknown, fear the the loneliness, fear the yes. this and that and the other. But you can't be fearful of that. You know what I mean? Because it's not like you're blocking out the world. You're blocking the bullshit. Like the real shit is still going to come through. It will. You always put yourself out there, but you put yourself out there with certain parameters. Real shit will be allowed in. It will be granted access. And then, you'll know, you'll be around like real situations, real relationships, real whatever. You can't just sit in the house with that shit, you know what I'm saying? Because you're not playing the numbers game at that point. You still got to put yourself out there in different ways. You still got to work on yourself, you know what I'm saying? Try to make yourself presentable or whatever it is. The reason why people work out, why they dress, yep. how they try to dress, why you're trying to get educated. You got to make yourself appealing. Yes, if you can in the best way you can or whatever, that's not going to drive you crazy. But at the same time, yeah, set your fucking boundaries, man. It's critical. And you need to be of value. You know, you can't think I exist. Therefore, I get you get what I mean. You must be of value and service, especially if you are a man in this world. The masculine burden of performance is is not understood. Just like I can't understand what it's like to be a woman and constantly be in fear that any person can overpower me. I can't really fathom that unless I go to jail or something like that. So I understand this and I have appreciation and sensitivity towards it. But on the flip side, the Masculine burden of performance is very real. You know, an average person, an average dude, if he has pressure to succeed, not to be, he can't just be, he must succeed and become. And if he doesn't, he will go into, unless he just doesn't give a fuck, he's going to go into a spiral. You get what I mean? Versus, you know, someone else who doesn't have that masculine burden of performance. And it's like, well, if I just am me, I'm cool. Someone's going to get down with me and everything's going to be good. That works when, it, when it's intersexual dynamics and you're the man that's becoming and the woman that it can be. And I'm not trying to sound sexist and misogynist. I'm just giving a case in point. But if you're trying to just be and you're the dude and the woman has become or she's trying to be, y'all are fucked. It's over, dude. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough and it's a it's a rough fact. And, you know, it maybe it'll change in 100 years. But for right now, it is what it is. So it's like you might want to, like, get your shit together. You might want to put yourself in a position where, you know, if, if all the people you deal with don't fuck with you or they're just tolerating you, find someone who celebrates you, dog. You know what I mean? Like, but don't allow abuse. You know what I mean? Abuse comes in many forms. It's not just slapping people. Just don't allow abuse. Yeah. Well said. But, you know, well yeah. said, young man. Yes, I appreciate you. You know, Keeney, don't I know you allow go. abuse. Don't allow abuse. You know what I mean? In any form, like, you know, you don't got to be fighting everyone who looks at you or says something crazy. You know, I live by the motto of, yo, you got it, big dog, because I'm living for another day. But don't right. allow people, especially close to you, to be out here abusing you. You know what I'm saying? Because those yeah. are the people you're, you allowed yourself to be vulnerable with. You know what I mean? And they took that, uh, that, that vulnerability and used it against you and weaponized it against you. So, you know, be carry, careful of that. Be leery. Stay safe out here. You yeah, know, so. um, you know, figure out new streams of income, figure out how to help people. You know, there's a lot of homeless people, a lot of hunger, as we said, you know, if you can, you know, tip a homeless guy a dollar, bring him out some food from the fridge that you may not be eating and you know, you ain't going to eat, but you know, it's still good. Just drop that off. You know what I mean? Like just do your little part and hopefully yeah, I mean, I the ecosystem can balance. We, we can understand stranger danger and all of that. Like we're not telling you to just approach people you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Drop that off when it's safe. You know what I mean? And it's a safe distance or you know do something you know for somebody that you know is not necessarily a threat like a motherfucker broke down in front of us the other day you know what i mean and we tried to help them in this you know immediately or whatever so i mean do what you can but you know i be careful out there at the same time like yep. i'm not suggesting you just like immerse yourself into anybody that like you know because there are scammers out there but at the same time you know do your part man we all got to try to do our part and there's a lot of parts to be done because Shit is on fire, you know what I mean? Certain weeks, you know, certain like heat waves that'll be happening that'll just force these dramatic ass, you know, temperature rises and shit like that. And then temperatures fall and people act like we don't have a problem again. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, y'all can't keep like trying to act like it's a surprise every single time. You know what I mean? 
Nope. Yeah, like that, we, we know you're not heeding none of these warnings from all these scientists and acting like science ain't real and stuff. You know, like, yo, you just can't keep denying this shit. There's no reason for a whole house to just catch on fire by itself. Like, just, you know, we pray for house the house. No. On super fire? Like, why? Hey, come on, man. Keenan, you got to go to Charlemagne and God and do your thing. I'm yeah. jumping on a meeting. Thank you very much, Know It Alls, for listening. Uh, play that fucking, part. play that mega ball. Play that mega millions. One billion. If you when hit it, growing. if you hit it, just fuck with us. Just fuck, take us on vacation. One yacht on us for one week. We keep me and Keenan to show up. Dude, I'll show up for sure. Yeah. When, is, when is the drawing? This Friday. So you got two oh, days Friday. to keep playing. Yes, two days. Oh, drop that hundo, but don't drop it on one place. Ten dollars here, ten dollars here, ten dollars here. Like each place you see, ten dollars quick pick, twenty dollars quick pick. Because if you want the random computer, because seventy percent of of winners are quick picks, so just randomize it versus just one spot. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. No, no. Quick picks hit like nine spots. Quick nine pick, quick spots pick. everywhere. Quick pick, quick quick, oh, quick pick. Man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what they call me when I'm in a strip club. Quick pick. Anyway, um, as you know, <laughs> <laughs> as usual, he's Keaton yeah. Thompson. I'm Tony Marol. This is you already know. Episode 119. My uh, Dirty Avengers is the title. Fuck it. Hilarious. Hilarious. Dirty Have Avengers a good one, Keaton. You too. Peace. <laughs>